Puma Media's Mining Weekly Online is talking to Andy Clay of Venman Deloitte and Annalie De Brain of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. The discussion point is around South Africa's Oil and Gas Committee and codes for oil and gas that will be relevant for any companies listing on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Four years ago, uh, we put a lot of effort into creating a, uh, a committee that was going to then construct the code and we decided that we would actually, rather than write our own, adopt in principle the National Instrument 51101 code. It's very well known, it's uh, effectively administered by the Alberta Securities Commission, who I'd met in Calgary and they gave us their undertaking to assist us in writing the code. On the local front, we had um, Annalee and the Stock Exchange as uh, a very uh, important contributor because we modified the NI5101 to take into account the local considerations for the Stock Exchange. More's the point is that we did include a broad number of um, uh, real experts in the industry and we also included uh, the Petroleum Association of South Africa from Cape Town. And Annalee, if a company is wanting to list on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and they're in the oil and gas field, what sort of standards will they have to adhere to? Well, when they make application to list, they'll have to do a report in terms of the, the oil and gas code. That report will go through a, a, a scrutinization process, you know, before it, it actually goes out into the public domain. Part of that process is the international um, alliances that we have. Um, in, in terms of, of um, our relationship with Canada and we also have a relationship with the Alberta Security, um, Securities Exchange to actually advise us if we do have issues in, in, re in approving these reports. So once that report is published it will be um, of a, an international standard. People who write these reports uh, have to belong to an international organization primarily so that's the Society of Petroleum Engineers the Society of Petroleum Evaluation Engineers and the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. There's also the local requirement to be registered through SACNAS, EXRA and, and PLATO, just as there is for a competent person in mining. But preparing the report, uh, they have to use what they call the Petroleum Resources Management System, which is a global standard. Um, the Ameri the, uh, currently, the Canadians use a oil and gas evaluation handbook which is being co-aligned with PRMS so that there's only one way to do it and effectively there's a form to fill out uh, which is prescribed in terms of the new SAMOG code. And what about uh, any companies that are already on the exchange that are in the oil and gas field? For cu companies currently listed if they do make a, a category one um, acquisition or disposal they will have to do a, a, a report as well on that specific and on the subject of the transaction we don't have ongoing requirements yet. That will be the next step, like we used to do with the, with the mining companies. Um, so that will be, you know, in the next year or two, we'll introduce that. But at this point in time, so it's for new listings, and when they make current listings, making an, an acquisition or a disposal. Shale gas, does this also fall into this category? Shale gas is considered to be an unconventional resource, so it's not the typical oil and gas that has um, changed the world in the last 150 years. And these unconventional resources are in fact catered for in PRMS. So reporting for shale gas and um, coal bed methane and other aspects, it's all catered for in the code. How different is this SAMOG now to the SAMREC and SAMVEL? There's just a couple of differences. I think the first one is, as I've mentioned, that in the reporting, the PRMS provides for the valuation and the disclosure of the quantities of the reservoirs in terms of like SAMREC and SAMVAL, but it's all scooped up into one process, which I think makes it simpler. I think the other significant difference is, and maybe Anna would like to explain, is that we did follow a very um, um, specific timeline with the Financial Services Board. And I think with regards to the SIMM and the GSSA and the SSC, they have not specifically been able to understand how to look after oil and gas practitioners because they're typically not members of the Institute of Mining Metallurgy or the Geological Society. So I think they've allowed us to develop our process with the JSE 
in a much more efficacious manner and I think that that uh, as, a, as a, a template going forward is going to be interesting to see the differences. The new uh, oil and gas regulations have been put out by the government in terms of the statutory responsibility and my reading of that at the moment is there's a very heavy emphasis on the engineering and the responsible maintenance of uh, wells being drilled um, and what they find and effectively how you close down a well with a big focus on obviously the fracking component but what we do see is there doesn't seem to be much of an emphasis on the reporting of the results and there's no reference in the statutory regulations of the PRMS which we find a little bit uh, strange but actually working in concert they have a reporting code into the public domain which is of a global standard and you now have the very specific engineering requirements that the government uh, has put forward mainly to look after the environment. At the stock exchange we have a surveillance process which like in the process for SAMREC and SAM, SAM uh, Val it should be just as efficacious. These um, reports go out into the public domain. It gets approved by the JSE. Now, we don't have you know, internally the expertise. We've got a panel that actually advises the JSE, and a panel of expertise in the field um, to advise the JSE on the approval of these, these reports before it gets published. So these, this panel makes sure that it actually complies with the codes. You will have a panel that goes through the, the presentation and uh, what sort of qualifications do those people need and how are they selected? We've tried to make sure that we have a mixture of um, highly qualified uh, reserve evaluators but at the same time we also have on the committee um, acting with us the Alberta Securities Commission they actually have uh, nominated people with us and at the same time we have really commercial highly experienced uh, executives who have a um, practical experience of reading reports and looking for things that perhaps look a bit odd. These individuals must have at least 10 years experience in the industry um, as well as membership of you know the American Petroleum Association etc. So it's it's really experts in the in the field. We've got a, a an, an agreement with the Alberta Securities Exchange to actually um, update us you know and keep us informed of any updates that they are making to the National Instrument 5101 so that we can consider the same kind of changes and keep the code up to the, the international standard. We do believe that this is a, a very important uh, initiative. Um, we think it's uh, long overdue but we think that it's, the timing is pretty good and uh, the big thing in terms of access to capital is whether or not the local market is going to uh, gain any confidence in the fact that we've got a global standard and the reportings can be completely analogous to anywhere else in the world. For the reporting of reserves, the SSC in New York effectively only allows you to present 1P, which is the highest confidence uh, reservoir um, quantity, whereas the Canadians and the rest of the world prefer you to publish 1P and 2P, so it's a little bit like you're measured and indicated, to give you a much better idea as to the, uh, the total uh, in situ reservoir value of that particular entity, which we, we've insisted upon as well. And do you think we're sort of on the cusp of a new oil and gas era here with these regulations now uh, promulgated and people have been talking about this for a long time, do you think we're on the cusp of a, a, an activity in, in this area? I think there's going to be activity and I think once the activity is there then at least we know that what they are reporting is you know comparable and at a, an acceptable standard. It depends very much on what happens to the prices and obviously we're in a very disruptive uh, uh, condition in the world markets with oil and gas prices there's a big focus obviously on energy and frankly the whole developments in the Mozambique gas fields with ENI and Anadarko is a very very critical component. Whether that ends up being um, uh, LNG or whether it ends up being a pipeline there's a lot of discussion going on it's more than 50, 45 billion dollars worth of projects um, and I think that if uh, people want to have listed paper then there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to seek either a primary or a secondary listing in the Johannesburg market. And I think that also depends very much on uh, the uh, empowerment processes because a lot of countries and most oil and gas fields are incorporated into an economic relationship with government called a production sharing agreement. And those PSAs very often have to find financing 
and there's no reason why governments can't use the exchange to, uh, to list paper to do that. And do you anticipate that some of this activity in Mozambique may result in listings or secondary listings on the, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange? No indication at the moment, but um, we would hope so. Let's just hope that we've created the right reporting framework, that people can come up with their own um, innovative opportunities. Government has provided now the uh, operating regulatory framework. If people can work within that, that's great. But we're not just looking at South Africa, we're looking at the broader African continent, which I think is a general focus for the exchange in yeah. any case. And so these African companies could have listings in Johannesburg, is that what the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is targeting? Yes, we are. Um, it's not, not our division, it's the Capital Markets Division, but they are very active in, 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 in Africa trying to, to get these companies to list. What does Venman Deloitte offer? What are, what are you doing day to day to create the foundation for all this? We have a very big focus on oil and gas and energy and we work with our international colleagues to basically prepare the reports. We've already completed one report which is not yet in the public domain. It'll be the first form one that will have been prepared in the country, yeah. And we've used our uh, international uh, qualified reserves evaluator from Calgary to help us to complete that. And will that mean that what you've been working on is part of a company's plan to come onto the Johannesburg Stock Exchange? That's correct. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly Online talking to Andy Clay of Venman Deloitte and Annalie De Brain of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange.